We left Puerto Vallarta and took the 40-minute Uber ride to Bucerias. The cost was 414 pesos, about $24 US. It's a small Mexican beach resort town in the state of Nayarit on a stretch of the Pacific coast known as the Riviera Nayarit. Buceria was known as a fishing town in the 30s and known for oyster diving. Buceria actually means diver's town. In the 2020 census, it had a population of about 16,000 plus residents. Seasonal, of course, with its um, expats visiting, Canadians, what have you, the number, the number doubles. It's a slower pace of life compared to Puerto Vallarta. The beach extends across five miles, eight kilometers of golden sand. Surfing, boogie boarding, riding the wave. Swimming, maybe, I don't know. When we were there, the waves seemed pretty rough. Here we have a newly constructed kiddie pool that works out great until the next wave comes in and washes it all away, and then they start over. While we were walking along the beach in Buceria, a subscriber recognized us walking on the beach, which for us doesn't happen very often. I forgot your name, so sorry. He bought a place there on the beach. I remember him telling us that. Trippy, he had a place in San Leandro, California, and oddly, that's where I grew up. The beaches in Buceria were really nice, easily accessible, um, nice to walk on. On the other side, there were resorts and restaurants and stuff that came up pretty close to the beach, but it didn't really interfere with being on a beach and just having a good time. The thing that always amazes me about the ocean is it's relaxing and calming to see. However, it's very powerful, very powerful, and can take your life in a heartbeat. And the thing that amazes me about the ocean, aside from the incredible power, is that there's a whole other world that lives in the ocean. While I was walking along the beach, I guess the wave must have brought that guy in. Luckily, the wave also took him back in. I don't know how lucky it is for swimmers out there coming across this guy. I'm sure he's harmless. You know, many of you don't know this, but I am a certified scuba diver and I've done many dives. You know, when you're out there, you're in their territory. Always remember that. And while we were in Bucerias on the beach, we got to experience some really beautiful sunsets. Here we are walking along the main street that runs parallel to the beach. There are a number of restaurants and things here. Um, we're walking towards the Buceria sign, which will be in the distance off to the right. And then off to the left, there will be a, like a park area. And if you continue straight ahead, we'll get into the shopping area, which will be coming up just a little bit later in this video. And did I mention that there are lots and lots and lots of Canadians in Bucerias? Lots of Canadians. We met more Canadians there than we did uh, tourists Anywhere. from the United <laughs> States, yeah. It basically consists of cobblestone streets, a main square, main central street, a wide array of restaurants, shops, and it's basically a beach town. Another thing that we noticed when we were walking around town is there are tons and tons of new condo complexes going in. And no places for people to park. Yeah, parking was awful you got there. Some hots, amigo? I got Mexican sombrero. Hola. 
<laughs> See, our YouTube. Where you guys from? California, but we live in San Luis Potosi. Really? Yeah. We've been living there for like four years now. You have paparazzi? No. YouTube. There's our. That's our channel. Our YouTube channel. We do YouTube about Mexico. Yeah. Well, that's your name? Carlos. 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 Carlos um, works at one of these shops here. Pucerias. Pucerias. The best part in the show. We want dark shirts. Uh huh. Sale. While we were walking along, <clears throat> we were told that this was some kind of a fish. Now, I don't know how true that is. If it is a fish, let us know what the name of it is. Anybody looking for a puffer fish or blow fish chandelier? There is a direct bus that departs from Auto Transportes Medina and arrives in Buceria. It departs, they say, every 10 minutes and operates every day. It takes about, mm, I don't know, uh, 40 minutes, maybe 50 minutes. While walking around town, we found this cool seahorse street light. I love it. And this, I think, is a condo. Look at the uh, balconies. And this, I'm not sure what kind of a tree it is, but I've seen them before. They're pretty cool. Again, beautiful ocean view. Yeah, it was uh, pretty tropical, too, also in Bucerias too. It's definitely worth walking around on some of the side streets and some of the streets a little farther away from the ocean just because you see some pretty cool things. A lot of color in the buildings too, I noticed. Yeah, which I really dug. We walked quite a distance down the beach and came to this resort via Del Palmar Flamingo and we cut through that resort and we took this really beautiful nature path back towards the center of Bucerias. At the end of the trail, we stumbled across this Royal de Cameron complex. It's composed of three resorts on one property, the Flamingo, the Tropical, and the Royale. It's a lovely, co colorful resort, all-inclusive. Uh, standard nightly rate is about 5,900 to about 6,100 pesos, which is about what, honey? About 300, 300 US dollars. A night, yeah. Um, there's 620 rooms, seven restaurants, six bars, five pools, nightclub, and a gym. It was open in 1985. It's got a 4.3 star rating. And I put in bookings.com just to see when I could book a room and what it costs. It was sold out in February, March, April, May until June. Here's some photos of the grounds and also some overhead photos. It was huge. It was very colorful, uh, very nice complex, um, but very expensive, as Paulette mentioned. 
And me being a woman of color, I thought it was fabulous. I loved all the color. That's one of the things that I absolutely love about Mexico is all the bright colors that they use. It's just so beautiful. Our first night we ate at this restaurant. It was an Italian restaurant. Prices were a little bit high, but again, it's high season and uh, they can get the prices that they ask for. The food was very good too, by the way. Of course, Mark eating his pizza. The food was good, but a little expensive. Here's the receipt. 860 pesos, about 50 US dollars at this time. The next day while walking around town, we decided to stop at this restaurant on the beach. The view was just spectacular. I love it. You can see how crowded it is with a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. And what kind of drink did you have? This was like a limonada with mint. I know it looks like a mojito, but it's not. And I, of course, settled for the Victoria beer. And we just enjoyed our time there watching the waves roll in. We had dinner here one night with our friends Leah and Victor that live in, um, what was it, Nuevo Vierta? Mm -hmm. They came and they met us. While we were waiting for our friends, we decided to order some calamari. The atmosphere was nice though, wasn't it? Just listening to yeah. the ocean waves was spectacular. Yeah, absolutely. You really can't beat it too. Um, and the weather was really nice. It wasn't, it wasn't that hot or humid. Great experience for sure. Here's Victor and I, whenever we meet up, we have a michelada, no matter where we're at. And even when you don't meet up, <laughs> You yeah. always film your Michelada and send right. it to each other. Right. You guys have heard me talk about camotes. They're sweet potatoes, and this is what the vendor looks like, and he blows a whistle to let you know he's arriving. It's another beautiful sunset in Bucerias. So we had breakfast at Las Flores, and I will say the portion sizes were super small. This was the smallest Eggs Benedict I've ever had in my life. Mark didn't even get any potatoes with his omelet, a little bit of avocado. And, but the inside looked really beautiful, don't you think, honey? Yeah, it absolutely did. Here's a picture of Paulette's frappe. frappe and a picture of her toe, which she's still recovering from, from her issue at in Puerto Vallarta. And here's the bill. Which was pretty expensive, I thought, for what you got. And the breakfast was about 30 bucks before tip. We had breakfast at Luna Luna one morning, and the breakfast was really good. I loved the scenery, I loved the bright colors, loved the sun and the moons on the wall. There were a lot of uh, Canadians there too, and some, some locals, I think. Another frappe for Paulette. Yeah, the food was very good. It was recommended by one of our subscribers, Sue Fornoff, although the service was kind of slow, but worth the wait. The bill came to about 27 US dollars before tip. This next restaurant, The Backyard, was a place that Paulette discovered after she did a search for cheap restaurants near us, and it was very good. So we just got some chicken nuggets and some uh, potato wedges. Mark had two sangrias, I had one. And we found out that they have live music there on a regular basis. Our bill was 590 pesos, about 35 US dollars. We decided to go back for breakfast the next morning. Mark had his regular an omelet, and I had a breakfast sandwich with a frappuccino again. And man, I tell you what, that breakfast sandwich was a 10 out of 10. It came to 16 US dollars, which was definitely worth it. 
The place that we stayed I found on Airbnb. The price was 4,647 pesos or basically 272 US dollars for three nights stay here. Uh, it was a good location to the beach. It was about a 20 minute walk. Um, but we seem to be the only people there really. We ran into a couple of people that were only there for like maybe one night or two nights and we only saw them for a brief time. Um, our room reminded me of being in bedrock. I kept expecting Fred and Wilma to come around the corner. It took a while for the hot water. The outside seating area was very nice. The name of the Airbnb was called Al Show. It did have a shared kitchen for guests plus a little refrigerator in our room. It was pretty quiet for the most part. The bed was comfortable. The Airbnb had fiber optic internet, but because of the location of the router, uh, the signal was actually not very good at all. So tell me what you thought your first impressions of Buceria was, and would you go back again? I like Buceria a lot. I like the beach scene. I like the uh, colorful buildings. Um, I just liked it all, and yes, I would go back again. And you? I liked it. Um, definitely a beach vibe uh, for sure. I think the three days that we spent there was probably enough time. I loved the beach with the uh, restaurants there. Um, just being able to sit and overlook the ocean, that was just really nice. And now we're on our way to our next location.